Welcome back. Okay guys, so last time on Pixel Art 101, we created this wall. And uh, at the end of the episode, for the 20% of you that actually watched, <laughs> you heard me say that I was probably gonna make it into a, a tile map, a, a man tile set. And that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna show you how to make this into a tile set. So I'm one of the developers working on Dwerve. You can um, scroll down and wishlist it on Steam now. It's a tower defense dungeon crawler RPG. So here I am in the Unity Dwerve project. And we created tiles for walls. And the awesome thing is, since we created those tile maps, um, they can auto uh, connect. And even though you might need to do this manually in your game engine, basically what I'll do is I'll show you how to create a tileable uh, wall like this. So there are a few different kinds of tile patterns that you can use. This is a really common one that you've probably seen before. So we basically have one tile done already. And that's this one right here. And can you guess where it belongs? It belongs right here. So what we need to do in this episode is draw the rest of these tiles. Okay, so I showed you the quickest tile pattern that you can use for your wall. And next, I'm gonna show you how to create these tiles the quickest way possible. So my favorite program for doing tiles is Pixel Edit. It's amazing, it's only 10 bucks, and there's even a free version, it just lacks a few features. Okay, so I created a new file here in Pixel Edit where the grid is 16 by 16, and check this out. If we take our, our sprite from uh, uh, a sprite, I'm just putting white where the transparency would be. I can go ahead and select this, Control C, go to Pixel Edit, and Control V, and now we, now we have the tiles in Pixel Edit. So the cool thing about Pixel Edit is that if I press the Control key and click on these tiles, I can basically um, make each one of these into a piece. I made it into a tile here. And you can zoom in, zoom out, but it might be kind of hard to tell what tile's what. So you can go to the little uh, tile settings here, and I'm gonna change the width to three. Now if I change the width to three, oops, let me delete that first one. You can see that it looks a lot more like um, basically what I have here. Now what I can do is basically just draw um, these tiles wherever I want. This is the cool feature that Pixel Edit has that you don't get in a sprite. So for example, I can go ahead and start um, start drawing, you know, uh, whatever kind of wall that I want. And we will see, this is a great way to see in the end how everything will connect and to make sure that everything connects. So it looks like I'm missing one tile and that's the tile for the center. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, and create that tile. I'll just create it over here. All I need to do basically is just create a box like this. Once again, I press Control. I think you have to pick that tool right there. I press Control and I create the tile. And now that I have the tile, I can just paint it in wherever I want. And you can paint over any of these tiles to change them. All right, so I sort of drew out my own little dungeon here. And basically all I was trying to do is have every different type of tile connect to every other different type of tile. So that way we can see uh, when we're drawing on these, um, what they look like when they connect. Here's the magic of um, pixel edit. Check this out. If you edit one of these sprites, let me put red on it so you can see. If I edit one of these sprites, it updates all the corners. So we can see what it looks like when it's connected to this one or this one or that one. And that way you can make sure that all the tiles look good when they're connected to each other. Isn't this gonna help? <laughs> yeah, that's why I own pixel edit. It's worth the 10 bucks. So because of this though, you also wanna be careful um, because if you edit any one tile, it's gonna affect all of them. There's, um, I forgot to, um, I didn't add the shadow into that tile set. Don't worry about it but the shade I should definitely add in. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this shade in there. Actually, I don't think you can paste transparency. Um, let's see what happens. Yeah, you can't paste uh, stuff with transparency. Whatever, just pretend this wall has that shading on it, right? <clears throat> let's continue. Yo, at 100K, I think I'm gonna get a haircut. It's about time, right? <laughs> Dude, look at this. <laughs> It's getting ridiculous. A quick way to move around in Pixel Edit, if you um, don't know, is to just use Spacebar. I think that's for every program, Photoshop and um, other stuff too. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste that there. Bada beam, bop, beam, bop, boop. And then um, I do want to have the the dark edge, but I'm not gonna go black. I'm gonna use this uh, purple. So here we go. We're gonna add that dark edge. Let's see what that looks like here. And as you can see, it updated um, everywhere else. Looking good. So that's fine. Um, I don't even think we need to really do much here. Maybe just smooth out the um, the shading here a little bit. And now that we have that piece, I mean, you know, let's save time and just copy paste it to the other side. However, this piece, it also goes up. It's not just a corner piece. So um, what I like to do is, um, let me show you an ace break. Let's say you see this white line, this white line, am I on the right layer? No, I'm not, here we go. Yeah, so this white line represents the edge and if you watch my furniture video, which by the way, I keep referring to my furniture video, but it still doesn't have a lot of views. So <laughs> I'm gonna put a link, um, link up there. That'll be a link to the video, maybe in the description too, because you guys really should watch my furniture video. It's so informative. But basically, um, I like to put this white edge around the edge. I don't even know if that made sense, but let me um, let me show you here. And then if you uh, if you have an object uh, like a wall or whatever, it's it looks pretty good if you put the white edge all around. In my shading tutorial, I did it for the grass, and it just gives it um, it it it's a it's a visual language. It lets you know where the edge of the object is. So since this right here goes up. This right here is going to have this white edge that I'm talking about. And um, it should actually be like that or whatever. The white edge should actually, what, what, but yeah, you get the point. So right here to emphasize that I will do something like, like this to emphasize that this is a corner. Um, if you're designing a kind of like a cool dungeon wall, you might even want to take this opportunity to make a cool corner. Let me find a reference online. So if you want to add more style, the corner is an opportunity to add a pillar like this or something. I think all that I'm going to do is um, just is just make that block a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is move this over. Oh my God, I don't know the hotkeys. Oh God. What? How? Ugh. Okay, so what I did there is I just made this this bigger because I do want it to have um, have some emphasis, maybe round it a little bit. Yeah, that should do it. To save some time, all you really got to do is just grab there and copy paste it for the opposite one. Just do it. So we put it there and <laughs> edit flip. Uh, oh, come on, how do you flip? There we go. Flip horizontal. And it didn't work. What? Maybe I gotta paste it. Yeah. And then Control F flipped it. All right. Look at that, guys. We got all the bottom walls done. It's looking good. I think the quickest way we can get these side ones done is I'm just going to grab one of the. I'm just gonna grab these bricks right here, just the top. Control C, Control V. Put them over here. Now let's rotate them. See if you can rotate. Yeah, there we go. Now put that right there. And we did it. Easy peasy, guys. All right, so we got that side. Obviously, we're just gonna copy paste it over to the other one. But I don't really like how it connects down here. Um, this brick is too tiny. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Control C, Control V. Move it, um, you know, at least a little bit higher. I'm looking to on the right, whatever, that's good enough. Move it right there. And since we want to emphasize this, um, this highlight, I'm going to go ahead and just add a, a few more, I think, a few more highlights um, on the wall there. If you have sort of a texture at the top of your wall, um, this is where you would paste it. But let's just say we wanted to go for that, like, um, that look that some dungeon crawlers have where the wall's black. You can just go ahead and um, wait. Why did why did it color this one? You see that? 
maybe contiguous no restrict to tile there we go and now we have that look you could even go black but it'll have that look that a lot of um you know whatever a lot of games have i actually kind of prefer it this way i don't think i'm gonna spend my time putting a texture up here you guys can do whatever texture that you know you want but um let's go ahead and copy this tile paste it and bring it over here selection flip horizontally oh yeah we got to hit enter then selection flip horizontally and then control d deselects pretty much in every program control d is the deselect except uh unity it's a uh, duplicate <laughs> all right and this wall right here isn't that this wall isn't that the exact same wall i'm pretty sure that that's a duplicate tile so since this is a duplicate tile this one right here what we can do is just um switch it up a bit so even though it is the same as the, uh, let me show you what, what two tiles are the same this tile right here is the same as this one and um this one should be used whenever you're near a corner like this so it should be a tiny bit different i think the coolest thing that we could do to emphasize that it's in that corner is add uh shading to the edge if i added shading here like a shadow it would look cool because it would give it more dimension problem is though that these two are exactly the same so what i'll need to do i'll still do it because i think you guys would want to do this so i'll show you i'll show you how to do it basically i think that we need to create another tile all right so now we have shading on both of those as you can see it didn't get applied to uh this one which it should have so what i have to do i guess is merge this layer down oh sh my head was blocking the view oh guys i'm so sorry let me move my camera to this side uh i'm so sorry <sighs> And I'm going to delete that tile, probably delete this one too. I wonder if I can move these tiles around. Yeah, you can. So you can rearrange this however you like. Yeah. Can I select a bunch of these and move them? No. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to mess with that anymore. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it right here. But you have to hit enter but um obviously this doesn't look like it's connecting right so um this right here needs to be a a, a brick that connects and let's make it look like it connects you could make it look like the brick um literally has can turn but bricks can't turn you know so i'm gonna put that there and now it looks like there's a square there a square brick which is what we wanted yeah that's fine and now we just copy paste that for the other side Control c Control v move it over and uh, then hit enter and then Control f and you flip it Control d deselect it if you know shortcuts you can work fast bruh so this up here basically same thing i think uh we're just gonna copy paste but it's basically going to be this section but flipped because remember we need the highlight not at the uh not at the bottom section but the top section like this we need that highlight near the top edge okay we're we're, we're pretty close to being done let's do this hang in there guys so i'm doing a bunch of copy pasting and i know there's people that might be like wow dude you're being so cheap copy pasting all this stuff but when you're a game developer, especially a solo game developer, dude, you wanna save as much time as possible. So I think I'm just gonna copy paste for that tile. And isn't it cool? Check it out, look at all of them update. It's just awesome. If you guys want me to do a, a, a pixel edit tutorial, um, I'd love to. That also would give me a reason to get better at this program. <laughs> so it looks like my tile set was missing um, two tiles. And that is this and this corner. 
Okay, so let's just go back here real quick and I think I can just draw these in. I don't need to do some copy pasting for these. These are gonna be pretty simple. Um, I do want it to look like uh, there's bricks. This one looks like it would end there. This one maybe ends there. That way, you know, it's also not super identical. Um, if you don't want to copy paste, you don't need to. It's pretty easy to, you know, spend an extra five, 15 minutes in order to get um, better variety. Okay guys, so I updated the, the template, the wall template palette here. And in Tiled, I also updated uh, the layout of it here. Cool thing about this is that when you go to file um, export, you can export, I was gonna point to it on my monitor, oh my God. You can export just the tile set. So I could export and I'm going to, I'm gonna export that tile set and, I'm, and this file and the a sprite file and, and i'm gonna put all of that in my free to use in games our asset pack which there's a link to it in the description it's on my itch if you do download this uh, our asset pack which is free by the way be sure to up here in the corner there's gonna be a follow button be sure to follow me because you'll know when this gets updated i really hope that you guys enjoyed that i feel like this is gonna be a huge convenience to most people who want to draw walls just use my templates or even use my wall in your own game and you know draw over it to to give it your own flair but if this helps you which it, it should help you if you're a pixel artist thumbs up subscribe and share it with a buddy you know what i'm saying so for those of you who didn't click away yet, you're the real MVPs and I got something for you. For the comment that I pin under this video, reply with a number between one and 100 and I'm gonna give away as many pixel edit keys as I can to whoever is closest to the winning number. Spread Nutella not hate. If you like the shirt, you can get it at Panic Pop, my clothing line. Yo, thanks for watching. If you like pixel art, you should follow me on Twitter. See if you can guess the canvases I got up this week. So that's Dark Souls. Katamari Damacy. Hollow Knight. And, um, darn, I forgot the name of this game. Uh, it's that top-down dungeon game where there's like a bunch of enemies. Oh my gosh, what is it called? Comment below if you remember what this game's called. I'll see you guys next time. Dev Life. Please subscribe, subscribe.